Hello. I'd like to share an experience I had with you, uh, and that is going to the hospital. Now, for the first 70 some years of my life, I've never been in a hospital. Uh, but the first time was about five years ago when I was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. Uh, but since then, I've been in a hospital about four times. Not always because of Parkinson's, but because of various uh, issues. Uh, I want to talk particularly about uh, the first time I went in after my diagnosis. I went in not because of Parkinson's. I was uh, having issues with uh, nausea, vomiting. So when I went into the hospital, uh, it ended up being something to do with my gallbladder. My gallbladder was acting up. So it didn't take long. As soon as I got there, I guess I was in the emergency before they put me into the hospital. Um, okay, nausea. Let's give this guy some medication for nausea. They did. And it didn't take long. I started having hallucinations. And that's where the Parkinson's comes into play. Now, I don't have hallucinations because of Parkinson's. I started having hallucinations because of the medication that they gave me to help alleviate my nauseous feeling. So uh, one begins to wonder, when you go to the hospital, if you have Parkinson's, you know, just what does the hospital know about your situation? They really should know you have Parkinson's because there's uh, a lot of things that can pop up and, and uh, be negative. As an example, I went in for gallbladder. I, I would have only been in there a day or two. I ended up being in there seven days, a week, because of various things. And uh, it, the very last thing I had before they let me out, they said, it was, didn't have to do with gallbladder, they said it's uh, orthostatic hypotension, so they wouldn't let me out. Well, all of a sudden there's a, a, a hairy something over here, that's, that's Molly. And you might hear some snoring. When I edited, uh, she showed up. So anyway, I was talking about uh, hallucinations in the hospital. Um, I do not remember the hallucinations at all. But when I woke up, I was in a different room. So uh, what I'd heard from the nurses, in fact, that's where they put me in a room right next to the nurse's station. Apparently, when I was having the hallucinations, I was trying to escape or something which I, I don't remember, so they wanted to keep an eye on me. Uh, but then I was in a room by myself, so I didn't have to share a room for a while. But. Uh, Back to the uh, medication, you know, they gave me something that didn't blend well with uh, Cinemet or some, one of my medications. Um, speaking of medications, the timing, the doses, very important if you have Parkinson's. And hospitals, uh, how important would it be for them? Well, they're very busy. Everybody's busy. And they have schedules that they must keep. And they change shifts, and nurses have to tell the nurse coming on, you know, what's going on. So they're very busy, I understand, but it's very important that we get our medications on time. And I found out that I had to, in a sense, let each new nurse know about my medication, because a lot of them didn't even know about it. And when it comes to giving medications, they have their schedules. Oh, an hour early, an hour late, you know, at, you know one, one way or the other, it's okay. And now, there's my grandkids are home from school. Okay, so it's been a couple of days, and uh, re I'm ready to go home after a couple of days. Uh, gallbladder issues kind of fixing itself. I'm... I'm ready to go home. I haven't moved in a while. I've been here two days. So a uh, physical therapist comes by so I can walk, see if I can walk. It's difficult to walk. We need to move it's, uh, every day. We've got to be moving. 
uh, get real stiff. And if our timing on our medication isn't very good, it makes it even worse. So anyway, I, I'm laying there. They take my blood pressure. It's uh, something over something. Look at my heart rate. Okay, I set up. They do it again. I stand up. They do it again. That's when the uh, uh, therapist said, you have orthostatic hypotension. Well, okay, I do. You know, is it neurogenic or, or what is it? Because I'm dehydrated? Why, why do I have it? Anyway, she wouldn't let me get out of the bed. That's when I started another five days of being in the hospital. I felt okay, except I couldn't move. They got three cardiologists working on my issue, the uh, orthostatic hypotension. And um, so they decided to put me on some medication. Uh, there's a few different medications where they can try to raise my blood pressure. Uh, let me back up a little bit. First of all, orthostatic hypotension, uh, if you say you're setting and take your blood pressure, and it's a uh, hundred over eighty. Then you stand up, and then it drops more than twenty on the upper number, or more than ten on the lower number. Uh, then you have orthostatic hypotension, and mine was doing that at the time. Now I didn't have symptoms; I wasn't dizzy or anything, but uh, it did drop that much. So they said orthostatic hypotension. Well, if my blood pressure was lowering, you need to take some kind of medication to raise the blood pressure. And there's a few medications out there to raise your blood pressure. But they have to do it over time. You take this much for a while, then this much, raise it up. Then you go to another medication, you add it with the first one. It's just, it takes time. So I'm in there for a week. So I'm going through this process. First, they put me on uh, fludrocortisone. It's called Florin F, just a very small dose. Uh, I think the most was like 0 0.2 milligrams or something like that. And then uh, after I took that to the maximum, they added mitodrine. So now I'm going to take mitodrine up to a certain amount. And boy, the symptoms, or symptoms, not symptoms, uh, the side effects of uh, mitodrine was terrible. With mitodrine, I got goosebumps, I got chills almost all the time. I felt like I needed to urinate urgently all the time. That was not good. But now I'm on Florin F, Mitodrin, then they had to add one more, this uh, Doxydropa. And of course, they don't have that medication in the pharmacy. So they call, they call around, they find it somewhere in a pharmacy down the road, and they tell me about it, and they, I guess uh, it, it's expensive. So a 30-day supply is, for me, after, uh, for my copay, it would be 1300 a month for, the, for my copay. I told the doctor, what, I'll just think about uh, the cost of that uh, droxydopa, and that'll raise my blood pressure. Anyway, I got, a, got away with not having to take the droxydopa. Because of my side effects with the mitodrine, I didn't have to take that. So right now, I'm only on Florin F to help with my blood pressure and the orth orthostatic uh, hypotension. However, there is a, a negative to that also, a possible negative, and that is supine hypertension. So now I can't lay flat on my back when I sleep because my blood pressure could go up so high it would be dangerous. So now I have to sleep laying down with, at a 30 degree angle or something like that, at least, at least 30 or 45 or something like that degree angle so, uh, so I don't have that issue of very high blood pressure which could give me a stroke. I had uh, asked the cardiologist if he had consulted with my neurologist at all. And actually, I talked to a lot of the doctors in the hospital. No one has talked to my neurologist. So I guess what I learned was be your own advocate. I called my neurologist, brought him up to date what was going on, and uh, that's just 
something you have to keep in mind, I guess. Hi, Molly. Is this the right hand? Not the wrong hand. <laughs> I want to end on a good note. So here's Molly. She's taking a nap.